recent trial conducted in the Department of Kinesiology and Nutrition at the University of Illinois at Chicago investigated the consequences of alternative day fasting, ADF, in a group of obese men and women. Okay, so they go on and tell you a bunch more things about the study. You can read through all that on your own. I'm going to get to kind of the important part here. It says, after eight weeks of treatment, participants had an average 12.5 pounds reduction in body weight. So I'm going to underline, underline that. That's the average, right? Reduction in body weight with a standard deviation of, so there's your standard deviation of 3.6 pounds. It says, no lean body mass of the participants remained relatively constant. Assuming the amount of weight loss has a normal distribution, find the weight loss achieved by the top 2% of diets. Okay, so when I look at the things I've underlined, first thing I notice is that it tells me that the amount of weight loss has a normal distribution. The average amount of weight loss is 12.5 pounds and a standard deviation of 3.6 pounds. This note, even though it's not really statistically relevant for us, is very important for the um, research itself. This diet, the ADF approach to dieting, um, maintain lean body mass. That's pretty impressive to lose this much weight and still keep lean body mass intact. Um, so again, if you read through the thing, the alternative day fasting diet requires you to, um, every other day, reduce your calories by 75%. That's quite a big reduction, so it's basically fasting on those days that you have to do that. But um, overall, the diet is very effective. So um, what we're looking for here is that assuming that the, the weight loss has a normal distribution, find the weight loss achieved by the top 2% of diet, dieters, right? So first thing I want to notice, normal distribution tells me I should do a bell curve. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a bell curve on our sheet of paper here. And we're going to use that bell curve to solve the problem. So there's my bell curve. Should always label my z axis and x axis. Z is centered at zero. We're going to label the mean and the standard deviation for the data that we're dealing with. The mean is 12 and a half. The standard deviation is given as 3.6. So the mean here on the x-axis will be 12.5. Here this x is going to represent the amount of weight loss achieved by the dieter. And we're trying to find the weight loss achieved by the top 2% of dieters. This doesn't say find the probability, it says find the weight loss. Remember, if it doesn't say find the probability, we're using the table backwards and we're basically trying to figure out where we should cut the table so that we leave the amount that they're talking about, in this case the top 2% of dieters, separated from all the others. So let's think about it. There are two possible places we can make a cut in the curve. When I see this find the weight loss as opposed to say find the probability, because it says find the weight loss instead of something like find the probability, I know my next step after drawing the curve is to try to make a cut in the curve curve somewhere. If I made a cut over here, let's think about it. If I cut the curve here, there'd be a little piece here and there'd be all this other space here. This little piece here would be the 2% that we're looking for. Is it correct to say that this would be the top 2%? I think it would be, right? Because this is the top half of the curve. The weight loss here after would be above 12 and a half pounds. These would be the higher amounts of weight loss that were achieved. So if I put a cut here, that should represent the place where the top 2% resides. The only other option I would have is to put a cuff cut on the left. And of course, this would have to be the 2%, this would have to be the remaining portion. And it would be clear that because this cut would be at the bottom, that would be the lower 2%, the people who lost the least amount of weight on the diet. We're looking for the top 2%, the people who lost the most. So this chunk is 2%, I know that much. I also happen to know that the whole curve from here all the way over is 50% which must mean that this portion here must be 48%. That has to be the case. And that means if this is 48%, I can write that as a decimal of 4,800. The reason why I'm interested in this chunk as opposed to this chunk of the curve is that our table, the table that we use to look up z-scores, reads from the line that you look up to the center of the curve. So if I want to know what z-score is located right here under that line, I have to assume that that z-score is going to be associated with the area from this line to the center. So that area there of 4800 is linked to the z-score, not the 2%. The 2% is not connected on the table to this. On the table, the 4800 is what's directly linked to the z-score. I notice since it's on the right of zero, I'm going to put a positive, 
And now from here, the next step is to go try to find 4,800 in the body of the Z table and to see if we can figure out what Z score is um, associated with that area or the closest area we can find to 4,800. So that's our next step. Let's go to the table, look up 4,800 in the body and find the corresponding Z score. Once we have that Z score, we'll just cal calculate the X value or the amount of weight loss that was achieved for those particular dieters. Okay, so let's go to the table and look up 4,800 now. Okay, so we're trying to find the area of 4,800 in the body of the table so that we can find the corresponding z-score. So if we look down this first column, we see like 0%, about 4%, about 8%, about 12%, about 16%, so on and so forth. So obviously we have to look a lot further down to get to 4,800. So let's move the table down until we see something nearby that. Okay, so if we look at this row here, we have the 1.9 row has 47.13, and the 2.0 row has 4772, and then after that we jump over to something that says 48.21. So we really want to look over in the 2.0 row to see if we can find something close. Let's isolate that row. Let's see if we can find something close to 4800. So I just come across here and I see 4798, that's real close to 4800, and 4803, that's also real close. This one's a little further away though, because it's three ten thousandths away. This one's only two ten thousandths away, so we'll take this number as the closest thing to 4800. The corresponding z-score to that then is 2.05, 2.05, so we'll use that as our z-score. Okay, so I've gone to the table, I've looked it up my 4800, and I found that the answer is 2.05. That is the closest z-score that's associated to that area. Now, once I have that z-score, the rest is a breeze. I just use the following formula. X is equal to z sigma plus the mean. I plug in the z-score I just found, 2.05. I multiply by that standard deviation, 3.6, and I add to that the mean of 12.5. And when I'm done with that, I have my solution. Let's see what all that turns out to be. So we have 2.05 times 3.6 plus 12 and a half. And when I finish, I get the result 19.88. 19.88. So keep in mind what this is. This goes here on the curve. That's the amount of weight loss achieved by the top 2%. So these people in the top 2%, they achieved this amount of weight loss or more, depending on what part of that curve they're under, right? But basically, that's the cutoff weight loss. Any weight loss higher than that is only achieved by 2% or less of the population. The remaining 98% of the population loses less weight than this. It's quite a large amount of weight, almost 20 pounds.